In Wampanoag culture, we use the quahog shell in a lot of different ways, and it does come from that mindfulness about not being wasteful and being self-reliant. So you eat the clams and clam bakes and various other ways, and then you have these beautiful, very thick sculptural shells. They're very hard to drill. They have this beautiful contrast in purple and white, and some shells are pure white. Culturally, we use both the purple and the white to carve into the beads, to weave into belts, and to weave into collars and strands, and also shape them into various abstract shapes and animal effigies and things like that. This is a seal pendant, and I carved it with a minimal amount of cuts to just suggest the shape of a seal sitting on the rocks on the beach sunning itself. The animals that I design, um, whether they're whales or bears or otters, they're also clan animals, so it's like a family emblem for extended native families. And they're really important for understanding how traditional society works and what people's responsibilities and their talent will often lead them to because of their identity. My artwork is connected to my traditional homeland here in the Northeast on um, Martha's Vineyard and Cape Cod throughout mainland Mass and um, Eastern Rhode Island. The work that I do is intimately linked to my tribal heritage, my identity as an Aquina person, as a whaling descendant. In our traditional stories, we talk about the whale as wisdom keeper and knowledge keeper for our tribe. And one of our stories talks about the time when Europeans were suddenly coming in huge numbers. In our story, we say that Masha, the creator being, or one of the creator beings, spoke to the people and asked us if we wanted to stay and you know, endure the hardship and the changes or if we wanted to leave. And the people who wanted to leave, he took them and tossed them off the cliffs, and as they tumbled towards the water, they turned into killer whales and they swam away. And so we consider those people our knowledge keepers uh, because they, they moved to escape some of the dangers and some of the hardship and death that some of the folks here were facing. I think creative people are sensitive people. We pick up a sense of things and the spirit of things through our hands. There's a lot of happiness, a personal happiness, creative happiness and satisfaction in seeing a process through, in starting at the very beginning with the raw materials and being outside. And I think having plants that I wild harvest or cultivate myself and process myself Having shells that I get to experience the joy of opening the quahog shell and seeing these incredible purple patterns, it's, it's really striking. Or just seeing how beautiful and substantial a white bead is when it shapes up and it's finally ready to be incorporated into a woven piece. For Wampanoag people, our traditional arts involve using local bark or bast fibers, also plant bast. So the milkweed is a really common plant in the Northeast and really practical for doing finer textiles. We always go out in the wintertime to harvest the milkweed stalks. They've reached their full height and their maturity. And the pollinators, various indigenous bees, introduced bees, hummingbirds, butterflies, all get a chance to use the plant in the way that they do for their life cycles. So it's peeled from the stalk, processed, um, spun, dyed, and then woven into a variety of, of different things, sashes or a skirt or a nice bag for your personal effects. I like to get nice tall milkweed, like my height. I start at one end of the stalk and I peel the fibers down the whole length of the plant. And once you have a lot of the fibers, you keep them nice and parallel, um, you start to take those parallel fibers and you have to break down any of the remaining outer bark that's kind of waxy that it clings to the nice silken fibers of milkweed. And then it's time to draw them out and start doing your spinning. You need to give them a twist because the twist then gives it a certain body and a certain strength. Finding the plants for dyes uh, can be really challenging. I grow a lot of things in my backyard on my own property. I encourage them to spread. Um, I started a, a garden on my 
um, tribal lands as well some years back. I use oak galls as a tan dye, but because of the tannic acid, they're great as a mordant to make sure other dyes are permanent. And so I might use um, oak galls and blueberries, or I might use sumac leaves and pokeberries, um, sunflower petals and oak galls. As a sewing fiber, I use sinew. And so the sinew is actually deer tendon or elk tendon, depending where, on where you live, maybe it's whale tendon or buffalo tendon or bear tendon. It's um, another material that you wouldn't waste when you're hunting. Our art is our way of honoring places and honoring the rest of the beings in our homeland. And teaching traditional arts is really important because cultural arts contain so much sophisticated traditional ecological knowledge that has gone into making those arts what they are and that's knowledge accrued over countless thousands of years. Thank you.